Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 213 of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. My name is Jeremy Lesniak. I'm your host. I'm the founder at Whistlekick. We make some great stuff. We produce some great content, and it's all because I love martial arts, and I'm not the only one. Hey, I'm not going to say I'm a ninja, but I'm just saying that no one has ever seen me and a ninja at the same time. Today's episode is all about humor, the funny stuff going on in martial arts. I'm not saying I'm a comedian, and I'm definitely not saying I'm a comedian, but I am going to try and lighten up this episode a little bit. I'll bring in some some jokes, some one-liners, and hopefully we can have a fun episode, maybe even a little more fun than normal. Frankly, I just wanted to do this for me. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. If you don't, um, I'll refund your money that you paid to listen. Martial arts can be funny. There's an inherent silliness to what we do. It's led to things like the book Angry White Pajamas. I mean, there's there's a there's wordplay there. People that see what we do, that hear what we do. I mean, the noises, our uniforms, some of the movements, the names of the movements. There's a lot of ridiculousness going on in the martial arts, and it's important that we don't take ourselves or our training too seriously. It's good to take a step back and see that. Hey, you know what? Some of the ways that we train and some of our rules are kind of goofy. Doesn't mean you shouldn't do them. Doesn't mean you shouldn't respect them. But you can see how inherently off, counter to most of what society does, they are. Now, not seeing the humor, you know, that, that kind of takes the fun out of training, doesn't it? I don't know about you. But if I'm going to dedicate my life to something, if I'm going to put in thousands of hours, I want to enjoy doing it. For me, finding some joy, some humor in my martial arts training, in competition, it's all added. It's bonus to me. If you don't, if you don't find yourself taking joy, finding some humor in your training, well, I would say that Maybe that's affecting your ability to become a well-rounded martial artist. We've got to be able to see the forest from the trees, to be able to see not just who you are, but where you're at in your training. And if you're not able to see goofy stuff and laugh at yourself once in a while, maybe, maybe you could benefit from doing that. Hey, what do you call a pig who does karate? A pork chop. Most of the martial artists I meet at the schools that I visit, you know, or teach at, or train at, everybody's got a pretty good sense of humor. And anyone who's ever taught, whether that's martial artists, or anyone else, school kids, you know, doesn't matter, you've probably used humor as a way to keep people's attention. It's one of the best ways that I know. And if you've ever taken a class I've taught, you know that I use humor constantly. It's a wonderful way to soften criticism, and it can help keep people focused. One of my favorite sayings, If people aren't smiling, they're not learning. I mean, truly, if people are enjoying what they're doing, they're learning a lot. You ever tried to teach something to a kid who doesn't want to learn it, who isn't engaged? You can't force knowledge into somebody's head. It doesn't work that way. And of course, humor can be a great way to help people ignore the the pain or the difficulty of a challenging drill or maybe some calisthenic exercise. I know one of my instructors right now is famous for telling jokes when we're on, you know, the 30th push-up of a set. I don't know if I've talked about this before, but my cousin was an incredibly tough man. He was a black belt who eventually joined the army. Sadly, the first time he saluted, he killed himself. (laughs) Humor could also be a great way to swallow the more challenging parts of what we see in the martial arts community. I've talked a bit about this lately. How many karate students does it take to change a light bulb? 100. One to change it, and 99 to stand around and say, that would never work in real life. Of course, you know my feelings on that subject, but it's certainly easier to joke about this stuff than it is to argue or to get upset. Find the time to laugh. Find the time to read between the lines. See the humor in not just what we do in martial arts, but in life. When we think about how martial arts is presented in popular culture, It's generally with a sense of humor. And I guess not always, right? Because we see movies with big dramatic fight scenes and everything. But if it's not that, if it's not a fight scene, excuse me, it's usually 
something humorous. One of my favorite things, the, the big exciting piece for me of the series Iron Fist that was on Netflix, the one that everyone just kind of universally hated, it was the fact that we actually got some stuff that wasn't fight scenes and wasn't humor. We got some real kind of actual martial arts relationship, student-teacher stuff going on in there. If you think about the way popular culture portrays martial arts with humor, we don't have nearly as many examples as with the fight scenes. But if you were ever a Seinfeld fan, as I was, you might recall the episode where Kramer takes karate. And he's going around and he's bragging to everyone about how he's the class champion and just this inherently gifted fighter. But then we find out at the end of the class, I'm sorry, we find out at the end of the episode that the class he's been taking is full of kids, small kids, and then they gang up on him. What do you call a sheep doing karate? Lamb chop. What do you call a goat doing karate? Karate kid. One of my favorite comedians, Dimitri Martin, if you haven't checked out his stuff, just brilliant, kind of subtle, sarcastic observations. And it, quite often with his delivery, it's, you know, two to three jokes later that you're getting the, la- the one from the beginning. And I found this one online. Last week, I lost my temper in my karate class. Man, I'm not doing that again until I'm a black belt. Because I can tell you, there's a difference between taking karate and receiving karate. I love this stuff. Honestly, I could, I could just read these to you all day. I don't know how entertaining that would be. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to leave you a few Chuck Norris one-liners, because let's face it, if it wasn't for these Chuck Norris facts, and I'm, I'm using air quotes as I say that, there's an entire generation of martial artists who may not know who he is. And I think it's wonderful that we've found a way to use humor to keep one of our legends alive. And we did an episode on Chuck Norris. Uh, we'll link to it in the show notes. And actually, if you didn't, if you haven't heard that, you may not know, Chuck Norris actually tried to fight the book with those Chuck Norris facts when they first came out. I'm glad he eventually relented and he's kind of embraced that side of his persona. He's done some comedy stuff within commercials and other things that showcase, yeah, he, he's okay with it. I mean, who wouldn't want to be known as that great, that powerful and strong, right? But here's a few of them, and then we'll sign out, and then I'm going to give you a few more. All right. Chuck Norris threw a grenade and killed 50 people. Then it exploded. Chuck Norris can kill two stones with one bird. When a zombie apocalypse starts, Chuck Norris doesn't try to survive. The zombies do. Once, a cobra bit Chuck Norris' leg. After five days of excruciating pain, the cobra died. Giraffes were created when Chuck Norris uppercutted a horse. That one's my favorite by far. (laughs) So like I said, we'll drop links to the places that these came from over on the show notes. If you've got other jokes or you have other websites with jokes, please leave those for the show notes or hit us up on social media. We're at Whistlekick pretty much everywhere. The website, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. You can check out whistlekick.com for all of our apparel, all of our sparring gear. We are up to six colors. We've got two more on the way. I'm not even going to tell you what they are. We've got new products on the way. If you're not checking out whistlekick.com once in a while, you're missing out because we're adding stuff all the time because that's what we do because that's what I want to do. (laughs) I want to thank you for joining me today. Hopefully you had a chuckle or two at this one. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day. Chuck Norris will never have a heart attack. Even a heart isn't foolish enough to attack Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris once went to Mars. That's why there are no signs of life. Chuck Norris is the reason Waldo is hiding. When the boogeyman goes to sleep every night, he checks his closet for Chuck Norris. When Chuck Norris was in middle school, his English teacher assigned an essay. What is courage? He received an A-plus for turning in a blank page with only his name at the top. There is no theory of evolution. Just the list of creatures Chuck Norris allows to live. Chuck Norris' calendar goes straight from March 31st to April 2nd because no one fools Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris once fought Superman. The loser had to wear his underwear over his pants. Chuck Norris can kill your imaginary friends. 
Chuck Norris's computer has no backspace button because Chuck Norris doesn't make mistakes. Chuck Norris can set ants on fire with a magnifying glass at night. Chuck Norris makes onions cry. The reason the Holy Grail has never been recovered is because nobody is brave enough to ask Chuck Norris to give up his favorite coffee mug. When Bruce Banner gets mad, he turns into the Hulk. When the Hulk gets mad, he turns into Chuck Norris. When Chuck Norris gets mad, run. Chuck Norris is the only person that can punch a Cyclops between the eye. When Chuck Norris enters a room, he doesn't turn the lights on. He turns the dark off. And the last one. MC Hammer learned the hard way that Chuck Norris can touch this. (laughs) Take care, everybody.